Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 9th, 2024. Video two of the day, let's get into it. Now, right now, it's pouring down rain outside. Now, what does this mean for Central Florida or any place in Florida? This means the ground is getting saturated ahead of the monster hurricane that's coming our way. And uh, I, I, I put up X posts. Uh, unfortunately, YouTube has me censored. I don't even know if this video will be allowed on YouTube. Uh, so I encourage you. I, I will post it. And then they'll just probably deny it. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see whether YouTube allows this video to go up. But anyway, if it doesn't, the burn on Rumble the burn on rumble that's where you need to go and else also you can follow me on x at at that cyber set guy that cyber set guy so anyway this means major flooding now i'm kind of in a low-lying area i'm not sure that my house isn't going to be underwater when this monster freaking huge belemoth comes through and destroys everything in its path but I wanted to keep you posted as to what's going on. So now, this video is, and, and, and I, I, I don't do this ever. I don't steal material from other people. I try to produce my own and just take a couple clips here and there of things that I think are important. But this is an entire video of General Flynn. Now, if you don't know who General Flynn is, he was the Trump advisor back in 2020, or um, no, actually, it was 2016 when Trump took office. And, uh, and the FBI uh, framed him uh, for crimes that he didn't commit. And unfortunately, Trump was too stupid. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I see that in a, in a, in a nice way. Uh, he was just a businessman. He didn't know the swamp that he was coming into. And, and when they told him Flynn was a bad dude, you know, I'm sure that he was like, oh, man, I, I you know, I guess we need to get rid of him. Uh, no, they, they knew Flynn was going to uncover all kinds of nonsense in the, in the federal government, and they got rid of him. And uh, so anyway, but I want you to understand what took place in North Carolina. Because, you know, if it, it, it's definitely going to take place here in Florida. Okay, and I might not be around in a couple of days. Uh, so I just want you to hear the story of what's taking place. Let's watch that video. I tell you what, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's about 30 minutes long. And, uh, and I hate to, to, to just post somebody else's work. And, uh, and by the way, I mean, you know, follow them and give them credit. But General Flynn, hopefully he's going to be a part of the new Trump administration, assuming that we can get him elected. Uh, and if I'm still around in a couple of days, <laughs> that, that's questionable for, for sure. Peace out. Stay free. I was born in the rain on the pots of train Underneath the Louisiana moon Don't mind the strain of a hurricane They come around every June The high black water, devil's daughter She's hard, she's cold, and she's mean General, thank you so much for making the time for us today. Big questions that we have that can only be answered by someone with your pedigree. Yeah. Where is the American military as Americans are suffering and dying? I'll preface this by saying our our sources on the ground tell us that there are hundreds of bodies, American bodies, still buried in mudslides uh, and thousands of Americans uh, that could potentially perish still in this storm. Where is the American military? Yeah. So a couple of things that I want to cover. And Nick, Nick Sortor is unbelievable. And being on the ground there and doing what he's doing, I mean, talk about courage. So let me take it to the big picture first, because it and, I, and then I will take it down to North Carolina and what what should be done, what should immediately be done. And we're already a week too late. So big, big picture. We have over 
a hundred counties, probably around 150 counties from Apalachicola, Florida, all the way up to the Appalachian Mountains of Western North Carolina. So probably looking at 150 counties, you know, in various states that are in a complete disaster zone. And so this is a federal emergency of epic proportions, of biblical proportions, that the federal government is basically has been totally absent, okay? I mean, absent. And I have uh, folks that I'm working with right now, and, and I'll talk a little bit about what we did in North Carolina, what's going on in North Carolina, because people out around the country are, frankly, some around the world are asking where can they can help, but certainly people around the country. So the big picture is we got about at least 150 counties that are in a, in a total disaster zone from Northern Florida all the way up to uh, in parts of Tennessee and of course, North Carolina. In, in North Carolina, there are at least, there's over a thousand dead that have been confirmed to me with the, just the body bags that have been filled. There are insufficient numbers of body bags. So there are dead bodies lying aside. And, and, and this is up in the, mainly up in North Carolina that is already pushing over a thousand. My guess is that by the time we, we, you know, look at all of what has happened, we're going to be probably somewhere around 2000 or north of 2000 dead people. There are still people caught up in the hills of North Carolina and, and Eastern Tennessee that their towns were completely wiped out. They're, they're totally isolated. Homes are gone. And one of the things I want people to understand is that one of the things that you consider for humanitarian uh, disaster recovery and relief operations, one of the first things you look at is the terrain and the weather conditions that are impending, right? So at nighttime right now up in the mountains in North Carolina, and I have, I'm very familiar with this area. I've trained up in there. I've been up in there many times in my, in my experiences in the military, especially at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I won't call it the other name, but Fort Bragg, North Carolina, which I will talk to in a second here with the, with the potential uh, deployment of other resources that the government has. Mm -hmm. So the, the weather conditions right now are wet. They are, uh, because it's misty at nighttime, it rains at night. We're looking at weather temperatures that, that are in the low 30s. And in another week or two, by the end of this, certainly by the end of this month, we're going to start to see freezing conditions, possibly even a, a, an early snow in the mountains of North Carolina, where these people are still walking around with nothing. So when we, because I'm going to talk about what types of resources need to be brought to bear and the things that I know that are being done. So the big picture is we're going to probably be north of 2,000 dead we have at least 150 counties, maybe 200 counties from northern Florida all the way up into uh, up into western North Carolina that are in this disaster zone. The federal government has done nothing. One other strategic uh, component here, Benny, and for your audience, when they talk about FEMA is out of money or the federal government's out of money, first of all, it's our money. So never forget that, folks. Secondly, the, our government has, has disaster recovery response funds and Congress now I'm talking directly to Speaker Johnson, right? Congress mm -hmm. can reallocate funds. So funds that are being allocated overseas to some other crazy endeavor that we don't need to be part of, they can reallocate funds with one simple vote. And, and actually, it's the Speaker of the House that can do that. So, mm -hmm. so I don't want people to go, well, FEMA's out of money, the government's out. No, that, first of all, it's our money. And the Speaker of the House has the authority to be able to reallocate from one line item to another line item, for especially for disaster recovery in the United States of America. And the, and the president of the United States can do it with a stroke. It doesn't even take a pen. It could just be direct th these funds to go to that effort immediately. The second thing is the, the president of the United States has the full authority to call out and federalize the National Guard. OK, and we probably are looking at uh, a division's worth of, of capabilities that we need. So an army division's worth of capabilities. So that's roughly somewhere between 15 and 20,000 personnel from that that you can you know, we can get from the national guard right now with all of the all of the logistics all of the the communications all of the tenage you know all of the, the what they call mobile kitchen trailers i mean for food i mean we can do water purification the 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 little numbers that have been sent i think it's uh, a thousand from uh, from the fort bragg area and there's like another 500. This is just in North Carolina. We need a full mobilization right now. And I'm serious about this. If, if, you know, if you sprinkled fairy dust on me today and put me in charge, we would have an entire 
We would have an entire active duty division because the active duty division, more than the National Guard, the National Guard has to come in. They got to go through all kinds of processes. They don't respond as quickly. So the, the 82nd Airborne Division, which is a three hour drive from the Western Hills of North Carolina drive, not like, you know, a day or two to get there. They have capabilities that can be there literally in two hours, four hours, 24 hours. And I'm talking about large packages of the full complement of everything that Nick was just talking about. I have got, I have uh, 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 representatives on the ground to, doing a couple of things. One, they're, they're collecting the intel right now. They're getting a, an assessment of the area. And these are the guys that are telling me how many body bags they're out of, how many body bags they need. There are still areas that, that they have not gotten into. I mean, some of the stories that I was told in the last couple of days, we had, and, and these were fixed, and I'll tell you how they were fixed. So we had North Carolina Forestry Service helicopters at Hickory Airfield in North Carolina that were sitting idle for five days. And the pilots who know that part of the country, like the back of their hands, were so frustrated because they could not, they were told, they were directed basically, don't do anything. Okay, they were, they, and they would call up and go, hey, these guys are looking for help, you know, help here and we can help them. We know this area very well because flying in the mountains with a helicopter is far more difficult than flying, you know, along a beach, right? Because you're up at a higher altitude. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of dynamics and technical issues here that people have to be aware of. So these guys were sitting idle, one phone call, one phone call, and it was to the Lieutenant Governor, Mark Robinson. And I'm going to give him a lot of cred right now, because in that phone call, he told me that nobody was answering their phones from the governor's office of North Carolina. Nobody was answering their phones from the his calls to the Department of Homeland Security, or he was calling up into the White House. So Mark took it on his own, went to the to the airfield yesterday afternoon and directed under his authority. And, I, you know, and I don't know what that means. I don't know what, if if he has that versus the governor. But he told those helicopters, to, you know, and because and they said, thank you very much. And they put those helicopters into service. They were sitting there, Benny, for five days. So. There's so many stories of incompetence and ineptitude and intentionality. FEMA. FEMA has a small element on the ground and people that are going up to it, there's no signs. So it's not like, hey, FEMA's here. You know, we're here to help. We got supplies coming in. We got relief efforts going on. They, they were told, don't, you know, basically don't address anybody that comes up. If they come up, just tell them you're sitting tight and you're waiting on resources. This was this morning. This is this morning, a FEMA operation that's a little bit further away from Hickory up in the uh, in the in the greater Asheville area. So that's kind of some of the tactical picture. But we we have the ability immediately. And I mean, immediately with the, with the with the phone call by the president of the United States directing the National Command Authority. And that means the Department of Defense, the Secretary of Defense, the the Department of Homeland Security, uh, FEMA and some of these other some of these other uh, federal institutions to mobilize, and they should put it under the the uh, the command and control of a military unit because because you're going to this is a military recovery and disaster relief operation. I've been part of many of these. This is a very simple operation, actually, and the military because these are Americans, right? Our 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 soldiers, and and I have too many stories in the last couple of days of soldiers at Fort Bragg, North Carolina taking leave because they were they some of them many of them live up there or other guys know people up there so they're taking their own leave to get out there and help out for a couple of days to just do some immediate operations because they can't take that much leave right a couple of days seven days and so units are letting them go so low-level soldiers are or our our rank and file understand the urgency they're they're watching this unravel and they're looking at our government go and say and do nothing. I mean, nothing. This is so outrageous. We we have, I mean, and, and what Nick was talking about, and you guys kind of touched on it in the end, you kind of say to yourself, why? And so, what are they doing, right? And you, you have to say to yourself, you know, 750 bucks, that's ridiculous. I mean, everybody knows. Everybody looks at this and goes, you know, what the hell is going on? And what's going on is, and I said this very publicly this morning on my, on my uh, ex post, you know, I want people to understand when they say build back better, they need to destroy the entire system in order to build it back better in their image. And I mean that intentionally. I mean that precisely. These people are, are intent on destroying this country. 
So there, there are also stories. This, this just makes me sick. And, and good reporting from good people on the ground that I know of the looting and a lot of gunshot fire, a lot of, a lot of gun, uh, gun fights up there to get rid of looters by some of the locals and by some of the recovery assets. There are also children that they're finding with ropes on their arms and their legs where they were tied to trees by their parents and their parents are now dead. And they, and the kids were able to get recovered. There are reports of illegals up in that area. And there's a group of illegals that they had, uh, uh, you know, basically grabbed up about three or four days ago. And, you know, these are the allegations of raping some of these children up there. So I, it, this is brutal. And this is a war zone. And, the, and, and in a war zone, and this is what I mean by, by, about this sort of disaster zone, it's like a war zone. You, saw, you showed many of the pictures, Benny. So when you have a war zone like that, you're going to have all sorts of nefarious characters, actors. You're going to have people up there with all kinds of, you know, hey, if you, if you support me, if you support this, you know, and they're going to be benefiting from it. That's we got to be very, very careful about who we're supporting, where your money's going, and the type of people that that uh, that are up in this area because they're, you're going to have it's such a gigantic area of operations. The only way, the only way right now for a a legitimate, uh, uh, you know, well done, well executed uh, recovery operation to take place is if they, if, if the United States government commits at least a, a brigade sized task force, which is about seven to 8,000, you know, men and women soldiers with all of the requisite capabilities to get in there. Now, this is even, this is even outside the scope of the National Guard. It's such mm -hmm. a big, big problem. And that doesn't mean that doesn't take any way from, uh, from the National Guard leadership. You know, they can put a, they can get a general up there who's got some guts and, and is ready to make some decisions. But the, the scale and scope of this problem, like I said, we're talking about so many counties in, North Carolina, but we're looking at a much, much bigger problem. And so the larger the problem, the bigger the resources that you're going to require. And those resources, because we're talking about interstate problems here, it has to come from the federal government. And for the federal government to say we were out of money is total bullshit. It's total bullshit. Excuse my Irish, Benny, to your audience. There are funds that are available. The president of the United States can redirect them. Speaker Johnson needs to stand up right now. And also he He's got the authority to to move monies from one account to another in order to to uh, support this operation. And then they, the, our Congress, our House, they should be so public right now in the public domain, you know, demanding that the president of the United States help these people. Benny, we're going to have over 2000 Americans dead from a hurricane, a hurricane that was never expected to go up into the western hills of North Carolina. And then I said, that, you know, the people that are that that have died and 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 will be recovered, you know, bodies from northern Florida all the way up to the hills of, of western or eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. Benny, there are entire segments of I-40, and I've seen the videos and the pictures. I-40, which is a major federal highway that cuts right through, the entire mountainside came down, right? So there's a, an entire section. They're talking about well over a year to repair that. I mean. This is something that is so big, you know, Kamala can take her $750 and put it where, you know, where, you know, the sun doesn't shine because right now of a much more massive relief effort. And frankly, I hate to say this because it's like it sounds like I'm crazy. But, you know, abutting this up to the to the most consequential election in our history that we are about to experience, I, I just it just smells bad. It tastes bad. You know, it's the old thing. If it if it you know looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck, right? And we got a problem right now, Benny. And this government is intentionally, you know, doing nothing. They're doing nothing. So don't let anybody say that there's no money, and don't let anybody say that there's no resources. There are both, and they they can be there in a moment's notice. We're already eight days too late. And for the 82nd Airborne Division and 18th Airborne Corps, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, I guess now called Fort Liberty. For those resources to sit there, what? Are they waiting to go to the Ukraine? Are they waiting to go to the Middle East? Bullshit. We have got to get these resources because that division, I can tell you, I, I've spent almost half of my career at that, in fact, more than half of my career at that base. You know, wow. in, the, in the world of special operations, in the world of, of really high-end capabilities, I mean, tenage, clothing, food, you know, logistics, bridging, trucks, 
uh, uh, air mobility. They have an entire, actually, they have more than a brigade's worth of, of aviation assets. They have a, to, a, a totality of command and control capabilities. Just uh, an ability to go up on, and I know some of the area up there, like there's some fairground areas, and then you have some, some offsite airfields where there's large open space where the space can be cleared immediately, just bulldoze. Because even the Army at Fort Bragg has bulldozers, has cranes, has all this complement of capabilities. All of that can be brought to bear. You clear up a couple of spaces. You start flying around there. You, you actually run it like we ran operations in any war zone in the country because that's what this is. In fact, it's worse than a war zone. You've seen the pictures. You've shown the, the videos on your screen. We need to get up there with, with, with military resources, and we need to do it now. And I mean now. And th you know, I'm, I'm thankful, to actually, because I think Ron DeSantis sent some, some uh, bridging assets up there from, from the National Guard and from the State Guard, but it's certainly from the National Guard. Other governors need to start coming together, folks, because if Joe Biden, who is he is not there. OK, he Joe Biden needs to be he needs to be 25th Amendment out. Kamala Harris, who has no concept of what I just said in the last 15 or 20 minutes. Zero, zero concept. But there are people in our government and there's certainly people in the in the Department of Defense. Lloyd Austin should be ashamed of himself as a secretary of defense. He knows full well. What is what the U.S. military is very capable of doing all compliments, whether it's National Guard, whether it's our reserve forces or whether it's our active duty. And right now to to put an active duty unit in there for, let's just say, 30 days. And then you can bring in, you know, some of the other uh, search and rescue, some of the other civilian capacity that we have in this country. Right. So we know that there's people and we'll, and we'll get this. I'll get this information to you so you can put it out on your show. Because there are, there is a church up there that is setting up operations. It's a great church, great pastor. There's another couple of groups up there that I know that are bringing in trucks, truckloads of food and, uh, and shelter and warm clothes. I mean, money, yes, will help pay for the fuel services. I know one of the guys that's up there, they brought six helicopters up private. These are private guys who went up there. They normally get a phone call from FEMA. FEMA never called them. These guys are the, are the top end search and rescue people, and FEMA calls them whenever there's a disaster, FEMA never called them. And so they're up there on their own because they just give a shit about what's going on. So they have about six helicopters and they need to pay for fuel. The folks providing the fuel up there have given them fuel at half price, which is really, really nice. For, for But that fuel will eventually run out. So we need to get, you know, we need to pay to get fuel up there. If we continue down this path, we're, we're trying to do this, you know, by by private citizens. It, it, you know, and I'll shut up here in a second, Benny. It kind of harkens back to the, the retreat from Afghanistan. When the government, when we pulled out of Afghanistan and, you know, the tragic loss of, of, uh, the, of, the, of the beautiful 13 lives, so many others that were wounded, the, the leaving behind of American citizens, the government pulled out. And so what happened? I mean, there's still Americans back there, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so private citizens stepped up and they started to conduct rescue operations in the most difficult part of the world. Now we're talking about right here in our own front yard. Not, our, not This isn't our backyard. This is our front yard, America. And we have the full capabilities, assets, resources, funding, all of it. And you know what? That's our money. Don't let anybody say, well, the government doesn't have any money. Bullshit. There is so much money that we can uh, that we can come get access to and they can reallocate this. We're in a new fiscal year. I mean, you know, these are things that I understand and, and uh, you know, and, uh, and God help these people if, uh, if, from my perspective, I ain't speaking for Trump, but from my perspective, God help these people if we get back into office because, w w you know, this is insane. We can't have close to 2,000 and it's going to go north of 2,000 when they finally, when we get all the, when we see it all and that, and the billions and billions and billions of dollars that are going to be uh, just destroyed in people's lives. I mean, everything so sad. Um, and, and, and we got to look back at these kinds of things and go, you know, what do we do? What, what, why, why? And I know why, I know why I think there's an intentionality behind this. And I would love J Joe Biden. He didn't even know that there's a storm. He didn't know which storm I heard you ask Nick about, you know, you said, what storm he was like, which storm you're talking about? Are you shitting me? And I, and I, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting, uh, you know, Irish on you here. I want to calm my voice a little bit because. Because we have people, American people, American citizens that are at risk, 
that have died, that have lost every single thing that they own. We have the full ability in this country to take care of them right now for an immediate period of time. And I'm talking about probably for the next certainly 90 days, maybe longer. You know, we can put them, we can put them, you know, up like we put illegals up, right, in hotels. I mean, we can bring them in. I, I know, I mean, these are all things that, that I know we are capable of doing. And the military can get in there immediately and, and start to put people in at least tents, you know, at least tents on a fairground and line it up like we've always done in places like overseas combat zones where we just, we get in there with CBs and we build plywood homes. I mean, you know, we can bring in complements of trailers. I mean, so much can be done and our government is on its rear end doing nothing hoping they're you know what they're hoping for they're hoping that it affects the election and the outcome of election particularly in places like Georgia like North Carolina affect are affected so much but I, I can't imagine you know I mean Nick Nick highlighted it you know trying to get people to be able to vote right I mean I, that's the last thing that is on my mind for these people you know I want them I want them to I want Donald Trump to get back into office you know Donald Trump has to have you know a, an entire battalion of infantry around him to protect him from uh, being killed by, frankly, you know, some of it might be Iranians. Some of it's probably people in our own damn government working with Mexican cartels and working with other, other, uh, uh, you know, criminal elements to kill him, to kill this man. So that's another discussion for another day. I, I, I know you wanted to talk about something that Jack Posobiec had posted. And I think Jack's right about that, that there's, an, there's other plots afoot and uh, this is insane where we are as a nation, never mind what Mother Nature and our government, what Mother Nature did and what our government has failed to do. So I want people to, I'll, I will I will get to you places where people can, can give that I totally have vetted, totally trust. And frankly, yes, the, 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 the organizations that are helping, they need, they need the money, but the people need shelter. They need thermal uh, sleeping bags. They need little, you know, little until our government kicks in, until something kicks in. They need tenage. They need clothing, warm clothing. They need preserved foods, right? Canned goods. I mean, all the kinds of things, you know, so we're, we're uh, going to be up there in North Carolina here in uh, Selma here with a big, with a, with a whole bunch of people. We've turned our, turned our entire Reawaken America event that we planned, you know, months ago uh, into a basically a humanitarian assistance relief effort. So we're going to be doing that. And then we're going to be in Charlotte, um, you know, helping out uh, Donald Trump with a uh, with a big event. And we're going to turn that into a humanitarian assistance relief effort. And and my personally, so personally, uh, one of the things that I do very well and for your audience is I connect people and I connect organizations because I have a great network of really wonderful people uh, they're mostly uh, former military, and these are hardworking, uh, you know, patriots. And they love, uh, they you know, they they know what a crisis, they know how to handle a crisis. So we're connecting different groups that I knew that were doing individual things. We have to be far more coordinated. So anytime that you see somebody, because you'll be talking to different organizations, Benny. The main thing that we need to do is we need to connect those guys. So I probably on the phone this morning have connected about four or five different organizations, people that didn't generally know each other, but they're all focused on the same, you know, focal point. And that focal point right now is to get relief efforts up into North Carolina. So we've got trucks going up. We've got helicopters going in. We do have some, some uh, funding coming in, kicking in for particularly for fuel, because the other thing is like you need uh, heaters, right? We need heaters. Heaters run on gas, propane, or they run on, on just mo gas. So, so those are the kinds of things, um, you know, there, there's the, the corporate, the corporate world of, of, uh, of Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. I mean, all of these big box stores, right? I mean, if you're listening to this show, please, please, please kick in, help, help those folks that are sitting on an airfield right now running. I mean, yesterday, as of yesterday, a private organization was running air operations for the entire area because the government wasn't there, okay? The government wasn't there. And, and I will, I will uh, put a plug in for Mark Robinson again, because I, I don't know if he listens to this show, but Mark, on one phone call, you know, up, in, up at the Capitol in, in North Carolina, 
he immediately that afternoon was at the Hickory Airfield and he got those those forestry helicopters mobilized and they're now flying uh, rescue missions alongside this private organization. And, you know, which is nuts. We should have an entire division, an infantry division mobilized for this effort, whether it comes out of the guard or whether it comes out of a place like Fort Bragg, North Carolina. That's what we need right now. And they can set up everything. And that can be the focal point without any of the BS. You know, you tell a you tell a two star general who's in charge of it. You say, you know, you have the con. You make the decisions. Get stuff done. Make it happen. You know, rescue people, help people. You know, if you need more stuff, you come back and you ask me and I'll, br I'll bring to bear more stuff if you need it. But right now we got to get those kinds of resources and capabilities out there. So, I mean, I, I've gone on and on. I'm just, you can, you can, your audience, you can hear it in my voice, folks. We have got to take this country back because if we don't take this country back, what we're seeing right now and the responsiveness of our government, we're going to see it in spades. And I, I mean, if if there was ever a time for them to shine, now's the time to shine. And these people have dark souls. And that's what we're seeing. So I'll shut up. Thank you, Benny. This is exactly why you bring the general on your show to get the orders from a military mastermind and from somebody who truly understands these systems. Now, uh, General, I, I can't help but look through some of the archives of what happened in Katrina what happened uh, with Hurricane Sandy when it struck New York and when these hurricanes hit dark blue cities and large Democrat voting pockets. Let's say this hurricane hit Philadelphia or Pittsburgh this election. Yeah. I can't help but wonder if the National Guard, the full fleet of the American military would have been immediately dispatched along with every conceivable federal printing press to print unlimited money to help these people out. You can go back and see the 82nd Airborne deployed to Katrina. Exactly. You can go back and see the military deployed to New Jersey and New York when dark blue cities were hit by hurricanes. Yep. And so you have to step back and say, you know what? It sure as hell looks like this is some sort of political vengeance, political cleansing of Trump counties in swing states. That's yep. what it looks like prima facie. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, Katrina, we deployed Katrina, which happened down in, in, uh, uh New Orleans. And then, um, the, the, uh, and I just lost the name of the, the hurricane that hit, uh, Homestead Air Force Base in Florida, which was one of the worst disasters. It was a hurricane that hit the 82nd Airborne was actually deployed down to, uh, Florida to, to do disaster re and recovery and relief operations in Florida. And I'm not a big fan of Rumsfeld. And I said this the other day in a, in a post that I put out because I wanted people to understand exactly what you're asking. You know, Rumsfeld, for after Katrina, there was 75,000 soldiers that were deployed to New Orleans, right? To the wow. 75,000 immediately. He said, he said, well, and I, and this is a quote from a guy that was in the room with him that said, we'll, we'll worry about the paperwork later, get them deployed immediately. 75,000 were deployed, like literally in a period of about four days, you know, to get them down there, right? And mm -hmm. so, and I'm, I, you know, believe me, I'm no fan of Rumsfeld, but, but when, when, when stuff needs to happen in this country, if we have leaders who care, mm -hmm. you know, and are willing to, to, to do the right thing, then we'll, we'll have responses like that where, like I just said, the, uh, the hurricane that hit Florida, uh, I think it was back in the early nineties, if I remember 92 and, I'm, and forgive me for the name, but, but that, that, they deployed the 82nd Airborne Division down there. It, it, they ended up sending about a battalion task force, which is about a complement of about, you know, 1,000 to 1,500, in addition to the National Guard that was deployed by North, by Florida at the time. So I think the numbers that we're seeing right now of National Guard that are there, and I think they said 1,000 were deploying out of Fort uh, Bragg, Fort Liberty, to go up into the hills of North Carolina. That's nothing. It's nothing compared to the scale and scope of what we're seeing. And, that, and we're already, like I said, we're eight days too late. So um, I I can't imagine what goes through the mind of somebody. I mean, I, I, I'm not an evil person, so I don't know what goes through the mind of an evil person. So I just leave it at that. So if President Trump comes back to office, and I, I, know, I, I know we're tight on time here, General, 
if President Trump gets back to, I want to give people hope because it's been a dark, it's been a dark yeah. show. I want to give people hope and show the difference between America last, which is what you are seeing at play here, and America first. And if Trump comes back into office, you have a position. You said wave a magic wand, but we can wave a magic wand. We can just elect the man back into office. Yeah. Uh, how do disasters like this get treated differently? Because uh, there will be further disasters. I mean, this is just a fact of life. Right. What does America first policies look like uh, uh, in the future? Yeah, you know, I want people mm -hmm. in your audience, yeah, to, I want your audience to think of their own home, right? Your own home. America is our home, and we must take care of our home first. If yes. we're strong, if we are viable, if we feel like our, you know, like you, if you feel safe in your home, you feel protected in your home, you feel like, like in your community that your home is in, if somebody is going to respond in time of need, you know, in an emergency, you, you know, you dial 911 if, when you're at your home and hopefully the cops are able to show up. Hopefully they haven't been, you know, given DEI training. And so that's that's what I want Americans to feel like in our home. We we are safe, secure, protected. We have people that are thinking about us because they can't do anything without us. I mean, we always say the government's money. No, that's our money. Everything that happens in this country belongs to us. So I want this is our home. That's what America first means. It means that we are going to protect our home. We're going to do everything that we can to make sure that whether it's a disaster or whether it's a, you know, the fentanyl drug problem, whether it's the illegals that we've got in this country or whether it's a, a threat from overseas against our home. Right. You got criminals that break into your house sometimes. We don't want that to happen. So we need to protect our country. That's what America first is about. Just like it's our own damn home, because, folks, it is and we're paying for it. And then we can start to worry because we can juggle. You know, we have enough smart people to juggle multiple balls so we can, you know, worry about what's happening in, in Eastern Europe. We can worry about what's happening in the Middle East. And we can look at our foreign policy, which is a disaster right now, and start to, you know, rein that in a little bit like a like a like catching a fish. Right. we got to rein some of this madness back in. We have good people that can do that kind of stuff. But we have to first make ourselves stronger. And one of the ways that we make ourselves stronger, and, and Trump has been all over this, you know, we, energy, and I'll just talk about energy for a second, because it's like your own home, right? If there's a disaster, I mean, you buy a couple of extra cans of propane tanks so you can, you know, make yourself a cup of coffee during a, during a you know, or, or some food or whatever, or you, you buy something to take care of your home. We have energy in abundance in this country to take care of the rest of the world, frankly. I mean, we have so much energy in this country and what that energy resource does. And I ain't just talking about fossil fuels or 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 petro or nuclear. Talk about all forms of energy. We have that right now. And if we put that into high gear, which was one of Trump's major, major uh, issues, we can turn this country. We can turn the lights back on in America and be that shiny city on the hill that we know we can still be. But we got to have the right leaders. We got to have the right focus, and that's one, but one big area that will immediately kick in. And once that kicks in, the second, third, fourth, fifth order effects of opening up the energy resources that this country has, it will it will start to grow and and have an effect on all kinds of other industries for our country. And we need to get back into being a manufacturing uh, uh, stronghold in the United States of you know from the United States of America to the rest of the world. We can still do that, but we got to have the right leadership in the White House. And right now, we don't. We have no leadership. General, thank you so much for your time. My uh, my team is telling me that we are at time that you that you've I got know. another hit. I know you're a busy guy. Please, everyone, follow General Flynn here. Obviously, you probably already are. 1.7 million followers. Make sure that our movement grows. God bless you. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.